Hello again, and welcome back to Illegally Cited. This is Jesse, a.k.a. BGFH, and I am back for something a little bit different again. Been a while since I've done one of these. I'm probably going to put this under the assistive technology uh, playlist or something to that effect. haven't quite decided, but the topic for today's video is uh, Windows 10, the basically the October 2018 update came out. I want to say, what is it, like 1809 or something like that? Build 1809, I think it is. Um, but it came out yesterday. I had it on a test machine a little bit, and I've, I've played with it a little bit prior to that on the uh, Insider builds. And enough has kind of been changed, and there's a few key things personally that I really, really like about the fall, or I keep, well, I keep wanting to call it the fall update like last year, but the October 2018 update. And this one's going to be focused on low vision. So <clears throat> they have also made, Microsoft has made some changes to Narrator uh, as well, but I just have not had the time to sit down and, you know, learn a lot of the command, learn a lot of it because what they did is actually changed a lot of the core keyboard commands to be more, I would say, I guess, in line with other screen readers, just so that it makes more sense. And I think that's actually a really good idea. Um, <clears throat> so if I get a chance to actually take a look at it and become more familiar with it myself, uh, that might, that could be a future video topic. But I do want to touch on a few low vision things because, yeah, um, there's some good stuff. Um, a couple, like, just a couple key things that I have been really looking forward to. Uh, I was able to provide some feedback to Microsoft and as well, and that also kind of helped. And, and that's one thing I want to, before we get into this, you know, we all, you know, it's so easy to just complain, well, why doesn't this work correctly? Why doesn't that work correctly? I want this feature. Why did, you know, I want that feature. Um, you know, you can post that out on Twitter. You can tell that in your blind, you know, around amongst your friends or colleagues or whatever, you know, but talk to the developers, you know, find, um, you know, talk to someone maybe at the Microsoft uh, Disability Answer Desk, talk to someone at Apple Accessibility, talk to someone at, you know, whatever, um, bring it to the attention of the company, uh, Microsoft, Apple, or a specific app developer, whatever it is, because if they don't know about it, of course, they're not going to fix it. So, like I said, what I've done several times, be it for an app or a game or something I'm beta testing, um, I will record footage of my screen and I will explain and actually demonstrate the actual problem. And then I will post that on my channel and I will just have it as a um, unlisted video so it's not a general public view. But if I share the link with, uh, if I share the link with somebody, they can still see it. Uh, and that's actually become really handy. Uh, there was a problem, if you remember, probably about a year, year and a half ago, I had a problem with Oculus where <laughs> they had released an update that, well, it kind of broke Windows Magnifier. And I'm like, nay, that's not really good because that's a really core pe you know, piece of software that I use every day. And so I recorded what was happening took them a little while to do it and we found a workaround in the meantime but they did fix it and it's been good ever since and like i said i've done that for many other things anyway um <coughs> let's get into the low vision stuff so i'm going to turn magnifier on so that low vision folk can see what is going on um i i don't know you know some of this may be too big for people it may be too small for others i don't know but we're you know we have to kind of choose so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to hit the Windows key. I'm going to type in ease of access because that is our home base. That is our home base. Um, so let me actually kick that down one more notch. So along the left-hand side, um, you have, of course, your different categories, and they do break it down. They break it down by vision, hearing. So we got hearing down here. Um, interaction, those are your main three categories, but we're going to focus, of course, on vision for the most part here. So under display, let's check that out. 
Now this is actually, I think, a new thing in the October update. Now we can basically make text bigger. So we got sample text there. And you actually have a slider. You can go, when I drag this, I can go anywhere from 100% all the way up to uh, 225%. You see the big A there, and then you see the size of the text there, and that's magnified. So if I hit apply, now hopefully this doesn't interfere with my video. Now when I do certain things, now I'm going to turn magnifier off for a moment. Look at how big, so if you just have a little bit of low vision, you just need text to be a little bit bigger. Um, maybe you combine it with the dark mode stuff. Uh, this might be, an, you know, maybe enough to help you. Um, Add that, add that additional color contrast, make the text a little bit bigger, that kind of a thing. Uh, you know, and that doesn't apply just to there, but you see even on the left-hand side, that's bigger. If I go to the Start menu, you got some larger text there. If um, Now, here's the other thing. I have, uh, I have dark mode on right now, you know, for settings and, like, settings and apps and things, and I'll show you where that is, too. Because that's not a new thing for, for this uh, October update, but it's well worth knowing. Um, if I hit Windows E to go to my Windows Explorer or File Explorer, check this out. It too has dark mode. That is the best because, man, like I work... That's basically the way I run my computer. Like if I'm looking... For, if I'm doing things with files at work, like working with forms and documents and things... I, I navigate through File Explorer and I open, you know, I open, I create folders and I do whatever. Um, it's just there. But you see all the text is bigger. Now I'm going to switch back. Let's kick her back down to normal size. So let's drag, let's just click here, drag that down 100%, apply. There we go. I'm going to hit Windows Escape again. And now it's all tiny again. We have the tiny text. But we still have dark mode. Oh, that is so beautiful. I'm so, so glad that that is, uh, is there. So, yes, once you turn dark mode on, actually, be, probably before we do ease of access, let me actually, um, you can do color, f uh, let me actually check something here. I think, um, because there's a way that I there's a way that I do it. So we have color filters here, but I don't know. Yeah, it's not in that one. The way I do it is I go to the start menu and I type in theme, because you're basically playing with the theme of the computer here. And when you're looking at the theme, so you can change like your wallpaper and all that kind of stuff and your color. But if you go up here on the left-hand side and you see colors, and you can adjust a lot of different things here. And one, if I scroll all the way, you can pick like your primary, like if you want an accent color. So when apps use like a background color, do you want it to be blue or green or, you know, all these different colors here. But if I go all the way down to the bottom here, uh, you have a choose your default app mode. So any Windows 10 apps that include settings and such, uh, it's of course defaulting to light. No, no, embrace the darkness. Be one with the darkness. Um, that's definitely what I do. One of the first things that I do. I'm going to close that. <clears throat> oh, yeah, because it overwrote where I was. Let's go back to ease of access and so I, I do want to I did want to show you like where the um, how to get that dark mode if that's what you wanted first so now this is a new thing of like I said of the October update we can uh, we can adjust the text size and that tries to also keep the original layout and format of whatever it is you're looking at uh, make everything bigger so yeah, you can also have, you know, you, you can basically change the size of apps, uh, apps and text. I haven't played with this a whole lot, um, but you have, you know, you can also kind of change the, um, a lot of the look inside of like a lot of the apps. So you can go 100% 
And you can go all the way up to, okay, 175%. I'm going to stay at 100. I'm just going to leave that alone for now. Uh, let's see, where is our next setting here? Okay, here we go. So basically to simplify and personalize Windows. So, um, you know, just like you would do in iOS, if that's what you're familiar with, or other operating systems, you know, you can, um, you can show or not show animation. So if you just want, like, when you open a program, you just want it to pop, open, or close. <coughs> or if you want, like, some, you know, the fade-out animations or whatever they're doing. Uh, you know, and it, even on slow, like, if you have a slower machine, that's also a good thing that you might want to disable because it might, you know, it save a few cycles and make things a little bit respond faster for you. Um, show transparency. In Windows, um, again, if you if contrast is an issue, sometimes uh, uh, sometimes transparency can really mess with that. Um, I think you know overall, for what for me personally, it doesn't bother me too much. I mean, there's not it's not used in a way that things get too overblown with the transparency, so I don't mind it too much. I leave it on because I you know I don't I don't like everything to look purely flat. Um, I, you know, I like shadows. I like some texture. I, I like things to actually have a little bit of, you know, depth and kind of detail, a little bit of interesting look to them. Um, uh, see, what do we got here? Automatically hide scroll bars, um, which is on, I guess, by default. Uh, for the most part, it doesn't really matter to me, but if you physically use the scroll bars a lot, um, you may want to turn that on or off. And I was looking for this setting the other day and I couldn't remember where it was. Uh, show notifications for mine is set to five seconds, which, you know, usually I use speech and then, I, or if I miss it, I'll go to the action center, windows a to get there. But at work, um, my work laptop, that thing, like, I, I think, God, it must sit there for like two minutes. It literally, you get a new email notification and outlook um, I've done read the email, responded and deleted, and then the thing finally goes away. So that actually, I got to remember where that is and change that tomorrow. Uh, let's see what else. So be, yeah, you can change, um, how long notifications are there for. And like I said, if you do miss them, they usually show up in action center, you know, with windows a, you can quickly get there. So, um, show desktop background image. So if you, you know, some people, you know, you just want a plain background black background or a colored background you know if you switch like your color accent you can just have that or you know I, I i like again i like having a little bit of detail that's why i still use this um yeah see this little kind of cool windows glass wallpaper thing here because it's dark enough where like look at my icons over here uh to me that's enough uh it's enough contrast when i use magnifier that it you know it's fine uh it seems to work pretty well uh, is that the last thing we have? Yeah, okay, so that's the last thing under display. But we still do have some vision e stuff. Um, cursor and pointer. This is one of the other first things that I will change. First, I will go into the themes. I will go to click on color. I will change my app backgrounds to dark. <coughs> By default, your uh, mouse pointer and cursor is this little tiny white guy. Nope, I want extra. You have uh, normal, large, and extra large. Uh, it looks a little bit different than it did in prior operating systems, prior versions of Windows. But uh, And then you have your basically your, your cursor color. You have your white, you have your black, and then you have your inverted. Um, even when I'm looking at a black background, I still prefer the black cursor, um, because I just, I like the black cursor, the pointer. And you notice that, you know, even if it's a black cursor, you got that bright white outline. So it's still kind of, it, it stands out really well, at least to me. Um, but you could go invert it if you wanted to. Um... Yeah, so touch feedback. I don't have any. I don't have anything that I because I'm a desktop computer here. So the touch stuff, I really can't really comment on too much. Um, here we go. Magnifier. 
Um, so it, remember, I think I might have done a video on AT demo or an assistive technology demo on Windows Magnifier way back in Windows 7 at some point. They've changed, you know, before you would have to click on this little gear thing and this magnifying glass, and then you'd have this little tiny, you know, the little dialog box with a couple of options. They've expanded that here in the last couple of versions of Windows 10. So you got your magnifier, you got your little description, you got your Windows Plus, Windows, Windows Plus to turn it on, your Windows Plus and Minus to zoom in and out, and your Windows key escape to kill it, to exit. I use that on a very, very regular basis. I use this every single day. Um, use magnifier. So um, turn on magnifier, that is on. And you also have a keyboard shortcut, so if I hit Alt-Control-Space, it's kind of a temporary, I'm not turning magnifier off, but it kind of gives you like that viewfinder, you know, you're zoomed way in, you're like, where the heck am I on this screen? <coughs> and some CCTVs have that, so you may be already familiar with, with that kind of a functionality. You can also change your increments, like your zoom level, so like, do I want to zoom, but you know, like I, you can right now we're at 800%. Um, but you know, you can zoom in and out. Of course you can change it there and you can adjust like, like uh, by a hundred percent. So like you said, you can change zoom increments. So, you know, they've added a few in the recent update where like some people wanted a little bit more granular control between certain levels of magnification. So if you want, not a such a huge increase or decrease when you hit Windows plus or minus, you can also change that. Um, then you have your startup options here, start magnifier after sign in, and you have your start magnifier basically during your logon screen. Um, let's see, collapse, yeah, collapse it into that magnifying glass. I, I would rather not these days. Uh, this is a, uh, this one was new, I want to say in the spring update, maybe earlier this year, maybe fall last year. I can't remember. Um, but smooth edges of images and text. And I do notice a difference. Um, I do notice a difference. Like when I'm zoomed in this far, we're zoomed in pretty good. And to me, everything still looks pretty decent. Um, as far as, you know, you being able to read the text and everything not looking super blurry, uh, invert colors. So what I was using before is, um, you can use alt control I while magnifier is running and I can, so if I do that, I can hit alt control I, ah, brightness. No, that's bad. But if I was looking at a dark or if I was looking at a white word document with black text um, then I might invert the colors but as of again the spring update earlier this year they have a feature another kind of a color filter which we'll get to shortly and that is independent from Windows magnifier and I didn't really look at it I didn't really ad admittedly I didn't really um, realize it until somebody had pointed it out to me actually not terribly long ago. And now that I've started using it, I find myself using that, uh, color filters thing pretty regularly, especially at work when we still work with like a lot of white documents. Um, let's see, change magnifier view. So you have your, of course, just like a lot of your screen magnifier views, you can change between like full screen and that stupid line that used to be on the earlier versions of Windows um, that to me was not useful at all. Um, I run it, you know, you can run it in like a corner of the screen or like a magnifying lens. I'm, I just toggle it between full screen or nothing. Um, that's kind of my, that's the way I roll. Um, here is the important part. Now, honestly... And I've had, I, I can't remember what the, what the outcome was, but I know I've had this conversation once, uh, once or twice with people by default here, 
Um, magnifier track can track or not track different things in Windows. So, of course, by default, it tracks the mouse cursor. So when I move the mouse, you know, the screen moves. Because if I uncheck that, I could literally move my mouse pointer off of the, off of the screen and I wouldn't be able to find it. So of course you want that checked, but and that is but checked by default. But a lot of these other ones are not, and to me that it, I don't really understand why. Like follow the keyboard focus. One of the when I first started using Magnifier in Windows Seven, one of my first complaints was, okay, I like that it's built in and I can read okay with it, but when I'm typing a document or an email. I want it to follow along so I don't have to keep nudging the mouse if I actually want to look at what I'm writing. Um, but no, you can check this, and when you follow keyboard focus, yeah, then of course, as you type, da, 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 it'll just keep going. And I think that should be on by default. Similarly, um, you know, text insertion point. That's more of your, that's more of your document there, your text insertion point. But like... Keyboard focus, if I hit the Windows key to go to the start menu right now, it's going to follow it. If I hit down arrow, see how nice it follows along, those are not checked by default. And I just kind of wonder, like, why wouldn't you have that? Why wouldn't you want that checked by default? So, like, I almost want to say that I would think those should be checked by default. And if people want them unchecked, um, they can do that. But in it, pretty much every scenario that I've ever been in, like I've always wanted those things enabled. Um, and then follow the narrator cursor. So if I'm also using the combination of narrator, which is Microsoft's built-in screen reader that's actually getting a lot better, um, when I navigate with the narrator cursor and focus, magnifier will follow along. Uh, what do we got here? Oh, here's a new one. This is kind of cool. So keep uh, keep the mouse cursor within the edge of the screen, which is what I have it now. So like, you know, when I move from, when I'm panning around the screen, it kind of, you know, it, it'll kind of move out of the way a little bit, but it pans. But a new thing that they added in this uh, October update, centered on the screen now as long as I'm not in the corner of a screen. So if you have trouble following the mouse, I mean, yes, you can add mouse trails if you wanted to, to make it easier to see, to be able to find it. But you can also keep it now when you're using magnifier. I can keep my mouse cursor in the middle. The only time it moves off to the side is when I bump up against the edge of the screen and it doesn't have any choice. And now I can access, like if I wanted to right click and let's say I wanted to empty my recycle bin. Um, yeah, so like I said, I can click on that. I can right click on my recycle bin. Let's, uh, yeah, let's empty it. I'm pretty sure we don't have anything useful in there. And, okay, yeah, sure, why not? And there we go. Uh, there's probably a lot of videos that I just deleted that I've already uploaded. So, you know, just like that, like, I, I'm I like it, but I'm not sure. Like sometimes I think it would be helpful, and sometimes like if I'm actually trying to read in the middle of the screen, uh, I don't know that I would want it always in the middle. But you know, again, I think it's a good option to have. Um, I'm gonna switch it back to in this first one right now for now, because now, like I said, if I'm reading this, I would have to kind of adjust it so that like the line would be either above or below the centered mouse if it was always there. But those are your magnifier options. Now, one thing, if you, I, I, I want to mention about magnifier specifically. This is one of the things that made me so badly want to update to the October update. Now, it's not in one of these options here. Uh, but if you have used Windows magnifier at all in the past and you kind of didn't care for it as much because one of the things that you may have found is that when you, let's say when you hover over certain things or if you right clicked on something, like let me go down to my system tray 
And let's say that I want to, oh, I don't know, let's just uh, cl right click on my NVIDIA here. Um, look at that. It just, I, I know it's, it seems like a really simple thing, but what used to happen, and I'm going to do it, I'm going to try to like replicate this is like, I'd move over here, I would right click, and then whoosh, it would jump way the heck over here. And then I would have to pan over and then try to read my menu. Prior to the fall, prior to this October update, that's often what would happen. And it was super frustrating Technically, it was usable, but it would be, and you had other weird things where if you were in like a context menu, you were, let's say you right clicked and you had like a sub menu of something, um, it would kind of get stuck and want to keep focusing on the thing. So you would try to move down and it would, it would kind of jitter up to the top that a lot of these jumping, like these focus jumping issues seem to be gone. And that my friends is a beautiful beautiful thing uh, because you know there are all, there are certain apps where that was extremely prevalent uh, let me see if i can pop steam open here so i've got steam up and running anytime that i would let's say i want to go to the store we got our library all this nice and smooth and you would have to come at it from like a certain angle because if you went at it like and you went from here to here, it would kind of just get spastic and like jump way over here and just, it was crazy. But now, boom, let's say I want to go to my profile. Boom, we got this. If I want to go to my, oops, let's say I want to go to my uh, uh, inventory. Do I have any, here's another, I don't know if I have any new items but like if you had like you had a list of cards and stuff that you unlocked here, every time that you would, if you had magnifier running, you would slide over and you would try to read something. You literally could not have your mouse over that section or it would jump. It was impossible to do. So what you ended up having, let's pretend that this bar here is where the cards were what I would have to do is I would have to come at it from the side and put my mouse just below it so it didn't touch that area. And then I could pan over and try to read it. But if I put my mouse anywhere up in here, it was going to just go completely insane. And it was kind of awful, but it's beautiful now. Like I said, awesome job, awesome job on fixing that those particular focus issues. Um, you know, like I said, I've had that in right click menus on uh, file explorer. I've had it when I clicked on the system tray, I've had it a few different places and everywhere that I've seemed to try it, even in, like I said, the, uh, when they put that in one of the, uh, faster slowing builds, uh, when I looked at it on one of my, on my other machine, I noticed it right away. I mean, it was like, yes, this is beautiful. This is great. So thank you, thank you, thank you, Microsoft. Um, that was one of the pieces of feedback that I actually submitted because um, it was driving me crazy, and I'm so happy that they were able to figure out what was causing that. Um, it's awesome. It's really good. It's really good. Store. Scroll on down. No jumping. Like, here's our new releases. You know, sometimes you would go over here and you would try to read something and it would just, you know, again, it would just go crazy. But it's, you know, we got some uh, some new stuff there. I don't know what any of these games are except for Mega Man 11, which I suck at. I like the idea of Mega Man, but they're hard, so I probably won't buy it. But yeah, um, that is Magnifier. So let's uh, let's minimize this and let's jump back into our settings app. <clears throat> so that is magnifier. I had to call out the focus issues, the focus fixes that they fixed in the October update for magnifier and, and the dark mode for windows Explorer. Those are my two things that I'm just like, yay. I love it so much. Um, let's see. We're on magnifier color filters. Now here's an interesting one. This is the one I didn't I didn't really give much time to until somebody pointed it out to me. 
So color filters, I can turn them on and off. I'm not going to turn them on just yet. Um, let's see. Allow, okay, yeah. Allow the shortcut key to toggle. So this is what I would remember. Alt-Control-I when magnifier is running will invert it. But I can make a windows wide, whether magnifier is running or not, I can have a shortcut key turn whatever color filter I want. So if I want, well, let's look at what our choices are. Um, so we say select, uh, select a color filter, uh, okay, to see elements. So we have inverted, uh, okay, reverse colors on the display, yep. Grayscale, grayscale inverted. So again, you're having, you have like full color inverted, and then you have like if somebody finds some of the colors in inverted mode really loud, really bright, and kind of harsh sometimes. Well, like if I went to, let's say I have inverted on right now, and I'm going to go to my desktop. So I'm going to turn this on. Oh, Jesus. That's really loud visually, and it's just, no, that's not cool at all. My eyes are bleeding. I'm going to turn that off for a second. But let's say I want grayscale inverted. Things will still invert, but it won't be... Oh, because, okay, because i got to turn it on first. Okay, hang on. So now if I look out, ah, that's not, like, you don't have that harsh orange like it, it's yes it's bright but it's not like some colors like really bright yellows and oranges and things like that especially in a dark room are just brutal um so we're gonna just um eh, i'll leave it like that but i'm gonna turn inversion off just because i want my see and this is the weird thing is you have things that sort of conflict and you have to pick and choose where you want to use them so largely you know, when possible, I'll choose a dark mode. So for my apps and things and my menus and when now file explorer, <coughs> excuse me, I'll use dark mode. But again, when I go to word, uh, I'm going to go, let's go into word because I do have word on here and I'm just going to open a new document. Hello and stuff. So now I could use my magnifier thing, or I could hit Windows Control C. There's my color filter that I have toggled that I chose. If I kill magnifier, it's still inverted. So that, you know, again, that can be very handy. You know, you want to zoom out. Sometimes maybe you, if you don't have, um, you can still see things with a little bit larger text. Maybe you just want... Some you, know, you take some of the large text features under there, under the ease of access, and then maybe you take um, the color filters and do that. So there's my color filters off. Turn magnifier back on. There we go. So I'm going to close this because I don't care. Let's head back to our ease of access center here. So there's our color uh, filters. Uh, let's see, what else do we have? Okay, so you got red-green colorblind filters. Uh, red-green... Okay, weak... Okay, blue-yellow. So you got a few different things here. And then you have... <clears throat> you can adjust, like, you know, whatever colorblind thing uh, with this little color wheel here, if you have, you know, if you want to use that. So those are some kind of cool things that you can do. Do. Um, let's see. I'm trying to remember. Let me. I'm going to turn color filters on one more time. Or yeah, color filters. I'm going to turn them on one more time because I want to see. There was one other thing, and I can't remember where uh, where I found it now. Um. Grayscale, um, because you can actually customize too. Like you can actually do a custom invert, like a custom color filter. Um, I was doing it the other day, and I just went stupid. I can't remember where that uh, where that feature is. 
but basically you do like a custom thing and then you can you have like a slider of what other color hue you want and then you can you can say oh do i want like a blue and yellow or i don't know green and red or whatever crazy color combination you want black and yellow and then you can invert that too so you can basically make this kind of a custom thing and then when you turn color inversion on if you don't like the ones the presets that microsoft has you can uh, change that. Now, I think, I swear to God, it used to be in this dialogue right under the color filters. Did they, they might have either removed or changed that from the spring update to the October update? Because I swear it used to be under like below this thing or this wheel or something, because I know I played with it like probably two weeks ago and I'm pretty sure it was like in here. So I'm sorry. I can't show you that specific part. And if they took it out, I apologize. And I can't remember, but, um, yeah. Anyway, there's your color filters. Uh, let's see. What else do we have? Okay. So high, uh, let's do look at a high contrast. Maybe is it under here? Oh, they broke, oh, here we go, here we go, here we go. So use, okay, so use high contrast. See, I think they actually popped this out into its own section. Choose high, high, so high contrast. So if I turn this on, and it says plus, or left, alt, left, shift, and print screen to turn high contrast on and off okay so this is what i was talking about so basically you can choose a theme you have like your high contrast and you can again they have your presets you got your uh you have your high contrast black oh i can't do anything because i have to turn it on okay here whoa here we go um but now i so I can say choose a theme to want high contrast black. See how the colors change now? You get that really nice, uh, kind of a neat looking background color there. High contrast white, absolutely not. But then if I start tweaking these other things here and then I go down to apply. So again, let's say that I wanted, um, I want, maybe I want yellow text. Um, maybe I want like a, <clears throat> maybe I want hyperlinks to be that green. You know, see, you see all these different colors. So you got hypertext, uh, disable, or, oh, okay, disabled text. So when something is grayed out and you can't interact, um, so you could change those types of things. Um, uh, so, okay, selected text, I see. Oh, okay. So, yeah, you can change like, oh, okay, if I have a black background and I, what do I want my um, selected to be? So maybe I want my highlighted, my background highlight to be yellow and then my text to be whatever. So you can change um, button text. So you can, again, you can change your buttons, um, your background and your text of your buttons. Um, background in general. So again, like I said, I could choose, like if I went in here, now here's what I was confused about is you have this square and if I click, let's say here, everything is black. We're like, what the heck? That doesn't make sense. What I didn't realize if I take this slider below the square and then let's go like this, let's slide it over. <clears throat> now I have this whole, uh, series of color or this whole, like all kinds of colors that I can choose. So when I click, there's your little, uh, round circle, there's your circle. And if I wanted my background to be that color, you know, I could, um, so you have to, what you might have to do is, you know, everything is set to far black here you turn this slider a little bit to whatever degree, and then you'll get different shades of different colors that you can do. So, yeah, and, and it gives a nice little tool tip there. Dark green gives you a little description of that. 
I'm not going to save that theme because no. <clears throat> um, and then once you'd make these custom changes, you hit apply, and then you're basically be given a, uh, a custom theme. So it'll be like dark theme three, or I, I forget what they're, you know, how they name it, but you can. Um, but we're going to, I'm going to turn these, the color of the high contrast off. So now we're back to normal with, with just our uh, dark mode. So yeah, okay, the, I, th I think they used to have that under like under a certain other tab and they may have split that out. I could be wrong, but that's where it is now. So that's actually part of your high contrast tab on the uh, left side. So the last one we have for vision is narrator. You know, we can kind of poke around here a little bit. I'm not going to really do the narrator stuff in this video because that's a whole other can of worms. Um, you know, we'll want to go into some of the, how the, some of the navigation works and stuff. Once I learn like some of the new commands and things so we can turn narrator on and off, allow the hotkey. Again, if you're using any other earlier versions of windows, then what is it like the spring or last fall update they change it used to be windows enter but now it's control windows enter to toggle narrator on and off um so you can allow that shortcut key or not and that is enabled by default so you you get a new computer out of the box you wait for it to start up a lot of times you might hear cortana start talking and it's a you know they'll even say you know if you do require a full screen reader she'll say like oh press control windows enter and then you can get narrator uh but let me just let's see so let's see choose when narrators uh choose when to start narrator so we again we can start it at the log on screen or when you log in sync settings that's pretty cool so if you're logged in uh Okay, so um, I'll have to explore that a little bit more, syncing the settings. Um, what else do we have here? I'm just kind of looking at, you know, the key commands aside, I'm just looking at what general options, see if I recognize anything other, other anything new. Uh, personalized narrator voice. Now, what I wish, I wonder, let's see, Microsoft David... English, United States. I wonder, I don't think you can. I kind of, and I ask this, I would kind of like to have the Cortana voice as narrator because I kind of like her inflection, the way she speaks. Uh, so we have, let's see, Microsoft David. And then we have Microsoft David Desktop. I think that might actually be a higher quality. I'm going to do that. Um, I'm going to, yeah, Microsoft, David, United States. Yeah, I don't, th I don't think we can. Uh, oh, be oh, because I have the ETI Eloquence installed. Huh? Yeah, okay, we got a whole bunch. Yep, whole bunch. Of, okay, Microsoft Zira desktop. Yep, so it looks like you've got three or four different Microsoft voices. You have a more of a compact and then a, uh, I'm going to do the desktop voice because I think that, like I said, that is more of a uncompressed voice. It just sounds better. Um, okay, voice speed. And there are shortcuts for all these things too. Uh, voice speed, voice pitch, volume. Um, select narrator audio output. Now this is cool. Because remember that video that I did where, like, on a per-app basis, you know, you can set, like, not only different each app's volume like you could for quite a while, even, like, Windows 7, <clears throat> but you can even choose a destination. So, again, let's say you're presenting something that has video or audio. You want that everybody to hear that, but you don't need them to hear narrator. You can say, okay, I want my narrator to come to my headphones but I want, uh, I want the other audio to come out through this speaker. So you can do that here. And you, so yeah, or if you're trying to DJ something, you know, similar deal. Uh, emphasis, emphasize formatted text. Oh, okay. So you can turn that on and off. Okay. 
Um, turn on. Okay. Oh, okay. Pa intuition pause. Supports only select voices. Okay, yeah. Okay. Okay, lower the volume over other apps. So that's kind of like your audio ducking like you would have on iOS. There's so, yeah, there's so many other options here. Holy crap. There's tons of these options. So we're, I'm going to stop there. Um, again, narrator is going to have to be a focus of another video. Just give you an idea. But, you know, that is there. It's built in. All that kind of stuff. So I think that's, let's see. I was trying to think if there's anything. We talked about the mouse, the cursor, changing the color of the theme, you know, the, the filters, everything in ease of access. I'm trying to think if there's anything outside of this ease of access thing that I like to change um, for low vision. But I, again, I would highly encourage you, especially maybe if you haven't looked at it in a while, and you thought, eh, yeah, Windows... 10 features, you know, Windows features are not really that good. I would definitely recommend getting this newest October 2018 update because it's available now. As I'm recording this, it came out yesterday. Um, uh, October 2nd, I think, is when it came out. And, um, I mean, it, it seems really stable. It seems fast. And like I said, God, for me, being a low vision user who, use magna who uses magnifier all the time, the, the, the focus, the lack of the focus jumping <laughs> is worth the price of admission alone. Um, you know, the dark theme in File Explorer is excellent. I don't think, though, the one, a couple places that it doesn't seem to do... If I go to like Notepad, that's still like Notepad and WordPad. They don't seem to still be dark, and I'm not sure. I mean, you could use a color filter. You know, again, I could go Notepad, and then I could turn my color filters on, but then that changes everything else. But so you could do it that way. But you know, I'm hoping because you know, again, not just the Windows 10 apps apps, but like your traditional desktop applications like your notepad wordpad um <clears throat> just like file explorer this time I, I i hope that those like those two especially um can also follow the dark the app dark theme so you know maybe that'll happen but anyway i just wanted to go through some of these um included low vision features in Windows 10, especially with some of the recent updates and fixes that I'm really, really enjoying in my short time using the October update. Um, like I said, I know I make a big deal out of it, but that, that focus that focus thing um, for Magnifier is pretty huge to me. Hope you guys found the video helpful. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, you know, again, you can follow me on Twitter at BGFH79. Like the video if you did. Maybe subscribe. Think about telling other people if you know other people might find it helpful. Um, follow me on Twitter at BGFH79. You can follow me on Mixer, mixer.com slash BGFH. And I think that'll about do it. Um, hope you guys enjoyed it. And until next time, I'll talk to you guys later.